This is Link 270, Language, Technology, and Society, Module 5, Writing, Literacy, and Society. In this lesson, we'll talk about the reforms used on the Chinese writing system. Um, so to begin, we are all, all very well familiar of the Chinese writing system, probably from our own personal experience, but also we've covered this writing system a lot in this course. And we are probably very well aware at this point that the Chinese writing system, being a logography, has a very large number of symbols. Um, um, and it's because it has so many symbols that it has often been perceived as difficult, not only within China, but also uh, across the world. And uh, being a difficult writing system, it has thought to be, it's been thought to be a hindrance uh, to literacy. And so because of this, the Chinese writing system has been very frequently the target of writing system reforms with the aim of, of increasing standardization uh, and improving literacy. So in this lesson, we'll be talking about attempts uh, that have been implemented throughout the history of the Chinese writing system uh, to reform it and or simplify it. We'll talk about which reforms ended up working and which ones didn't, uh, and we'll talk about how these reforms are related to changes in literacy, if they are in fact related at all. Um, so to give some more background about the Chinese writing system, um, uh, the, uh, a Chinese dictionary called the Yi Tz Zijian is a dictionary that uh, documents over 85,000 characters which have been used in the Chinese writing system. Uh, so this is an extremely large number of, of characters. Uh, however, it is important to note that a majority of these characters are historical, which is to say that they are not very much used in, uh, in modern documents. Uh, and a lot of the reason for this is that new characters uh, can easily be created. Uh, sometimes uh, individuals will add decorations to characters uh, for uh, their names, um, and characters can even be designed to be deliberately as complex as possible, as you can see in the, in the character uh, at the bottom right of this, uh, of this slide here. Um, so uh, the Chinese writing system, in a way, is a very productive system in the same way that our spoken languages are as well. Um, however, although uh, this kind of productivity can produce a very large number of characters, it's important to note that uh, a majority of these characters are not used very frequently. And there is a small set of about 4,000 characters uh, where if you know these characters, you'll be able to understand almost 100% of texts that you'll come across. Um, so really the frequency of, of Chinese characters is very unevenly uh, distributed. So this is an important thing uh, to keep in mind about the Chinese writing system. Um, so uh, with this fact in mind, many standardizations have been attempted throughout the history of, of the Chinese writing system. Uh, with the aim of standardizing these kinds of variants that can be uh, developed and simplifying the characters which, which are developed uh, by uh, simplifying um, the, the stroke, uh, the, the visual complexity of a character. In other words, by removing the strokes that a character actually has. So we can see the first reforms of the Chinese writing system uh, occurring a very long time ago. So we can see even the first efforts of standardization beginning in the Qin dynasty. So this is around the year uh, 2000 BC. Um, now, uh, remember that Chinese is a uh, logography, which we discussed in our writing systems unit. And early Chinese characters, uh, many of which, not all of them, uh, are visual portrayals of objects. And you can think, it's easy to imagine how a uh, writing system like this, um, where you're just, where you're drawing images that represent objects, uh, that object might be drawn in different ways. And you would expect that there to be a lot of variation with a kind of uh, symbol system like this. And that's in fact what we find in the early Chinese writing system. Um, so there was, uh, before 200 BC, there was quite a lot of regional variation within uh, Chinese characters that were used. Um, so uh, the Qin dynasty was able to politically unite uh, a, a large uh, span of the Chinese territory um, 
And uh, it became a goal of the Qin Dynasty to implement a large uh, number of standardizations, such as a standardized set of weights and measurements. But uh, another standardization that the Qin Dynasty implemented was a single standard writing system. And that meant selecting a single set of Chinese characters, which would be used as the official writing system for uh, legal documents um, and administration. Um, so it was the, uh, it, this, uh, the, this is, uh, we can consider this to be really the first reform to the Chinese writing system, and it had the goal of improving commerce and administration. Uh, and it's in this time where we see the first uh, kind of um, collection of Chinese characters that we could uh, kind of consider a proto-dictionary. Uh, so this is called the Zanjie uh, Pian. Um, so this was a document used to collect the kinds of characters which would be considered uh, valid for use in, in official records. Um, so, so here we can see that even in its very early history, we've seen that there have been major efforts to reform uh, the Chinese uh, writing system. Um, but after this reform, there wasn't really a lot of change in, uh, in, in terms of reform of the Chinese writing system until we get to the 1900s. Um, so one development that we see in the 1900s, which uh, occurred uh, partially as a result with contact with Europe, was the development of a romanization system, which is called the, the Pinyin system. Um, so this romanization was first developed uh, by European missionaries uh, who first came into contact with China in the, in the 16th century. Uh, and they developed this romanization as a way that they could more easily access the Chinese language and uh, uh, translate religious texts uh, into Chinese in a way that would be easily acceptable for themselves as Europeans. Um, so we can see that this, uh, these efforts of romanizations are hundreds of years old. Um, and after the fall of the dynastic system in China, so uh, around the early 1900s, we also see that there was a renewed push to uh, increase uh, literacy in China by implementing a writing system using this kind of, of uh, Latin alphabet. Um, however, the, um, the systems developed in this time period were uh, not widely adopted. They were based off of the systems that had already uh, been developed by the missionaries, but they were uh, not really widely implemented. Uh, this kind of uh, changed in the 1950s uh, when Zhou Youguang was assigned as the, um, by the People's Republic of China to develop the pinyin system. Uh, and uh, so the pinyin system is, is the system that I actually used to write the title of this slide. So here you can see the, the pronunciation, uh, how these four characters are pronounced, uh, namely Han Yu Pinyin. I'm not a Chinese speaker, so I'm not able to say the tones very well, so I apologize for that. Um, but what we can see here is that I, I am able to write the Chinese uh, language using Latin letters. Um, and these, um, and now it's important to note that the Chinese writing system is very different from many European languages in many respects, one of which is that Chinese is a tonal language. Um, uh, so uh, the Latin alphabet doesn't have any uh, natural letters or, or characters to represent tone. Um, so a system of four tone diacritics was developed to represent the various Chinese tones. So we can see that the, the A here has a falling uh, tone, which is used to represent, um, or a falling slash to represent a falling tone. And a high flat bar is used to represent uh, the, the high tone of Chinese. Um, so in this way, uh, uh, Zhou Youguang was able to develop a uh, a romanized system for writing uh, Chinese. Uh, and it is currently the most popular method of Chinese romanization. Many systems have been developed, but Pinyin is the most popular. Um, and uh, so uh, Zhou Youguang, uh, as you can probably infer, uh, he was assigned by, uh, to develop this system by the People's Republic of China. And part of this was that uh, Mao Zedong uh, it had a, a belief that the Latin, a, that a Latin-based alphabet would eventually replace the Chinese character system. So we should think about the context in which this kind of reform is occurring. This is uh, uh, in the uh, 
uh, early part of the People's Republic and before the, the Cultural Revolution. Um, so Mao Zedong, as we, we know from history, was a, a famous iconoclast. And he believed that it was very important to, um, to, uh, to attack the aspects of Chinese culture, which uh, he perceived as um, were perpetuating a, a dominant aristocracy, one of which being a, a as, as he perceived it, a, uh, a complex uh, character system, which becomes is very different for the average um, uh, Chinese individual to learn. Um, so this is what this is the reason why Mao Zedong believed that a Latin standard would eventually uh, replace Chinese characters. However, that uh, didn't actually end up happening. Um, Chinese characters still are used today. Uh, however, a, a reform system uh, was developed, which I'll go on to talk about uh, right now. So, um, so uh, in the uh, the early stage of the People's Republic of China, there was a very large uh, percentage of the population that was illiterate. Uh, in fact, only about twenty percent of the population in 1949 was actually uh, literate. Um, so the the People's Republic began a an aggressive campaign uh, to reform the Chinese writing system to increase literacy. The the pinyin system that I've talked about already was one of these attempts. Uh, but the other attempt, which ended up being uh, more implemented in practice, was the character simplification process. So the, the simplification uh, unfolded over uh, two stages, uh, one of which was uh, made official in 1956, and the second one in 1964. There was also a third stage in 1977, uh, but it ended up causing too much confusion uh, among the population that it was eventually rescinded uh, a few years later in 1986. Uh, nonetheless, the first two stages of the uh, character simplification process uh, have remained and are used in the People's Republic of China uh, to this day. We can see an example of how some characters uh, were simplified uh, on the bottom right of this slide here. Um, so uh, what happened is that when, when Chinese characters were developed, uh, complex characters were replaced with characters which used fewer, uh, fewer brush strokes or uh, fewer pen strokes, you could say as well. Um, so if you actually go through and calculate the average strokes used in a Chinese character, we see that the average number of strokes was reduced from 9.15 to 7.67. Um, so in this way, uh, the simplified Chinese uh, character system possibly sped up uh, the, uh, the writing. So this was one effect that the simplification process had. Um, however, despite this change, it's important to note that a large portion of the Chinese writing system actually wasn't changed at all. Really only a small number of characters, um, uh, 2000 characters were actually simplified. Now that's a very large number of characters, but we have to keep in mind that the total number of characters uh, is in the tens of thousands. So uh, 2,000 characters is really only a small fraction of the total number of characters. Um, and some of the characters of the, uh, in the, of the traditional character set were removed, um, uh, but only 7% of them were actually uh, removed in, in this way. And uh, so um, despite these simplifications, uh, the simplified Chinese system still has a very large number of characters. So a learner still needs to memorize a large number of characters. And really at the end of the day, the, the complexity or the, the, um, uh, the way that the Chinese character system works wasn't really changed by the simplification process. Um, so, uh, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, and uh, what, we, what we can notice as uh, uh, from the, uh, the beginning of the People's Republic of China to the present day, is that there has been a massive increase in literacy uh, in China. Um, so uh, starting from a uh, only 20% of the population being literate to a literate population, which is 90%. Um, now, however, we have to be wary of, of, of effects like this because correlation does not imply causation. There may be other factors that uh, are that can better explain this increase in literacy, which we will uh, in talk about later in this uh, module. Um, and um, we can also kind of um, we can also know that the that the 
this reform process wasn't the sole cause of this increase in literacy, because there are many areas of, of China which still continue to use the traditional characters. And in those regions, literacy has increased as well. So we can see that these traditional characters aren't really a hindrance on literacy. So it's not the complexity of the character system that is really causing this, uh, this difficulty to literacy. Um, and, and one thing to, to note about these simplified uh, Chinese characters is that uh, as they were implemented, uh, sometimes uh, some confusion would uh, result. Um, so as I had mentioned earlier, the third stage of the Chinese simplification process actually had to be rescinded because it had caused uh, so much confusion. Um, uh, so we can see an example from our textbook, which I've added here on uh, the right, where, uh, which was found uh, written on a sign in, at a market in Beijing. Uh, and we can see that this individual uh, used, a, um, uh, used a set of characters, some of which actually don't exist. So we can see that the, the middle character next to the question marks is actually not a character that exists in the Chinese um, uh, writing system. But it does look very similar to uh, the, the correct uh, version of the, of the new standards. Um, and uh, so sometimes these characters would, uh, uh, sometimes uh, people writing in the Chinese writing system would use the wrong version of a simplified character, or they would write uh, a similarly sounding uh, a, a, a word um, uh, using, a, 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 using a different character. So they would get confused uh, with homophones. Um, so the development of the Chinese simplification process ended up causing uh, so a significant amount of confusion. Um, yeah, uh, some of which even don't exist in Chinese. So this is something to keep in mind when we're thinking about how a writing system reform might happen. Actually creating a new standard uh, might end up creating confusion and that kind of thing might be de more detrimental than it is actually helpful for literacy. Um, and now, as I um, as I mentioned, so this this process of of, of uh, simplification of Chinese characters was developed in mainland China, and that is the standard that mainland China uh, still continues to use. That this is the current uh, standard of the People's Republic of China. Um, however, there are still a large number of countries which do still use the uh, the traditional characters. So. Uh, this would include, for example, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, uh, and the Chinese minorities in uh, Malaysia and, uh, and Singapore as well. These are all areas which still continue to use the traditional characters. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, these areas have, um, have seen significant increases in literacy as the mainland has. Um, so it's not, this is a testament to the fact that it's the traditional character system wasn't hindering the writing system. There are other factors at play. And so in later lessons, we'll talk about what factors those are. Uh, so to summarize what we talked about in this uh, lesson, uh, the Chinese uh, writing system being a very complex uh, system with many, many characters has been subject to many reforms uh, over thousands of years, uh, beginning in the Qin dynasty. Uh, most recently, we've seen uh, that there's been quite a lot of reform efforts, uh, many of uh, the most significant of which were implemented by the People's Republic of China. Um, so this was the simplified Chinese character system. Uh, so this uh, was a system that eliminated and reduced a, uh, the number of strokes in a small percentage of, of characters um, and did cause a, a, a bit of confusion at times. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it has become the main uh, written standard. Um, and this, we talked about how this reform process coincided with a large increase uh, in literacy. Uh, however, we can't really conclude from this fact that it is the simplification that caused this increase in literacy. literacy. Uh, this is, uh, can be proven by the fact that areas which still use the traditional characters also have high rates of literacy as well. So it is not just the complexity of a writing system um, uh, which, which, uh, which uh, can hinder literacy. That's a key takeaway here. Um, we talked about how a romanization system was uh, developed and, and popularized uh, and how it was even favored by uh, very influential individuals like Mao Zedong. Uh, but it, it did not ultimately replace uh, Chinese characters. 
Um, however, there, there, uh, in other uh, areas of the world, there are some romanizations which ended up uh, uh, being successful and becoming the new standard. And we'll be talking about this in, next, uh, in the next lesson.